a triple background check. Three of them, not one, not two, but three. How many that is? Three background checks in the state of Illinois just for you to own a gun, and that's just the beginning. What's going on everybody? It's your boy RGG, a regular gun guy. If this is your first time on my channel, please smash that sub button. And if you're returning to the channel, I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Oh man, man. Another Illinois video, right? Just when you think Illinois could not get any worse when it comes to gun laws or gun control, Lord have mercy. Boy, these people about to lose their damn mind, man. So, shout out to Washington Gun Law. I, I think I've said this in previous videos. Um, I'm, I'm a big supporter of that channel because he gives a lot of great information, man. Even though he's in the state of Washington, he talks about gun laws in different places where they're trying to snatch away our 2A rights. Oftentimes, he speaks on Illinois. And by me being in Illinois and being a gun content create, I think it's only right that I share this information to the people that watch my channel. I took a chance, or not took a chance, I took some time to go and look at this new bill that's been submitted. So we don't know exactly when it's going to pass, at least I don't know. I know that it exists because I was able to look it up. And it's House Illinois House Bill 3239. And in this bill, man, unbelievable it's to the point where they're trying to make it next to impossible to even purchase a firearm so let's not forget about what we're already dealing with right they passed this so-called assault weapons ban that i don't understand for the life of me and then you know we got these magazine capacities and then there's this long ass list of firearms that you just can't buy or you can't own or our gun stores look terrible, man. I feel for those guys as business owners because I don't know how the hell gun stores in Illinois are even stand above water because they take they've taken everything out. Like you can you I mean, my god, man. The stuff you can buy is so sad. I feel bad. And then I try to stay optimistic, you know. I've made a couple videos talking about firearms that are Illinois compliant you know, about as cool as you can get, you know, you can get some decent handguns still, you know, as long as you get a magazine that's compliant within the state of Illinois. But it's, it's just tough, man. It's tough. Uh, in this new bill, you know, and I, I, I don't shoot the messenger. I'm just trying to, you know, get the word out to let people know what's going on. But in this new bill, man, and I'm going to bring it up on the screen as we talk about it. This, and I just took some parts from it. You know what I'm saying? Just the, the key parts that matter the most to us. So, if an applicant is applying for or renewing a firearm owner's identification card, he or she must submit evidence to the state of Ill to the Illinois State Police that he or she has completed at least eight hours of handgun safety training approved by the director of the Illinois State Police. What? Did you hear that? So now, if if this passes. It's bad enough that you got to have a FOIA card. That's already unconstitutional to begin with. But now they want you to have eight hours of training to be approved by the director of the state police. Now, here's the thing. In Illinois, if you know, you know. You try to, you fill out for a FOIA card. You renew your concealed carry. You apply for your concealed carry. When you go through the Illinois State Police, they take their time. They ain't on nobody's schedule. You can't just call somebody and check on it. Ain't no status updates, man. That shit is is null and void. They understaffed, undermanned. This is virtually impossible to do that. So how the hell are they gonna add some more responsibility to the Illinois State Police, saying that they gonna you know? get this uh, training approved. But hold on, it gets worse. Each local law enforcement agency shall issue a firearm permit to an applicant who seeks the purchase of a firearm to verify the identity of the purchaser and shall complete a full criminal background check of the applicant that includes obtaining fingerprints from the prospective firearm purchaser. 
provides that each local law enforcement agency shall keep records of those permits and make them available to the Illinois State Police through the, uh, through the law enforcement agency's data system. What? So this means you got to go to your local police department. You got to do a full criminal background check. This is each time you go buy a gun. So if you're a gun enthusiast like myself, and you might go a few times a month, you might be looking to go buy a gun. So you telling me each time you go buy a gun, you got to go do a full background check, get your fingerprints done, and, and at the local police department just to have to take this to your FFL where they're going to have to do another background check for you to get the gun. There we go. There's more. So, provides that the duration of the permit shall be 10 days after its issuance. Provides that the local law enforcement agency may deny a permit to purchase a firearm to an applicant if the agency, in its discretion, believe it is in the interest of public safety. <laughs> oh, damn. That did it. That was the strong that broke the cows, I don't know. All I know is this, this is this is where it gets bad. You telling me, first of all, that permit that they give you, right, for you to be able to buy a gun, only good for 10 days. However, they have the ability to deny you. If he, he might look at you and be like, hey, man, you don't, you don't look like you should get no gun, man. He might not like what you're wearing that day. What if... What if he what if he gangbang off duty and he's a crypt that likes blue and you go in with red on and he just decided he didn't like that that day and he just decided to deny it? Who's gonna question him? I'm gonna tell you how I know that nobody really questions the state police if they say something or do something that I think is stupid in law enforcement in general. I had a personal situation with a family member of mine who had his FOIA card revoked only because there was a police officer that he had some differences with. It was just through some other weird stuff. And the police officer just didn't like him and, you know, reported it to his buddies, like basically like a red flag law, and got his FOIA card revoked. And then when he tried to go to the appeal process, right, they may, it's, he's still in the appeal process. And this has been over like a year and a half. And there's nobody to talk to. And he, there's no reason that his FOIA card should be revoked or, or taken away from him. But they're able to do whatever they want to do. I've seen multiple cases of this personally of guys who have had some issues with their FOIA card and for whatever reason can't get it fixed because they really don't want you to have a FOIA card or the ability to be able to buy a firearm. Why is this all bad? Because all it means is just another way to be able to control us, right? So they already control what you can and can't have. And now they're controlling your ability to even be able to purchase it. So is that not snatching away our 2A rights? Let's think about what this is. This, this weird-ass House Bill 3239 that will probably pass knowing the state of Illinois. And it, and it could happen any day now. So by the time you see this video, or by the time this video releases, it may already be in effect. Okay? So let's start from the beginning. In order to get a FOI card or renew your FOI card, you would have to complete eight hours of training that needs to be approved by the director of the Illinois State Police. That's just to get the FOI card. If you want to purchase a firearm, you're going to have to go to your local police department and they have to do a full criminal background check, including fingerprints, issue you a permit that will only be good for 10 days, which they will have the right to deny you for, the local law enforcement agency may deny a permit to purchase a firearm to an applicant if the agency, in its discretion, believes it is in the interest of public safety. How about that? And again, that thing is only good for 10 days. You, and then you're going to have to go to your FFL and get another background check done. Which is, What happens if you delayed or something, right? And before you can even get the gun. Then you got to wait an additional three days to be able to pick up your firearm, man. This is unbelievable. It's unbelievable, man. So I just want you guys to think about what's going on in the state of Illinois. My goal is to get the hell out of this state because 
there's no way that I could continue to do the things that I do. It does not do anything good for law-abiding citizens, right? It, it, it only works against the law-abiding citizens. Because if somebody's out there and and they in the streets and they doing whatever they doing, it ain't even have it don't even have to be in the streets. Even if it's somebody that wants to create some heinous crime or commit some heinous crime, um, they have the ability to do so because they're not even reading these laws. They could care less about them. So the people that that's being affected by this are the ones who are trying to do the right thing and protect their families and protect themselves. There was a recent case in the state of Illinois where a gentleman was at an ATM and he was a concealed carry holder. He got some money out of the ATM or however it went. A guy rolled up on a bike with a gun, attempted to rob him. The guy pulled out his gun and a, and a shootout ensues. And I do believe the gentleman that had his concealed carry got hit as well. But ultimately, he ended up unaliving a tempting robber. That was one of those stories where uh, the bad guy was trying to do something wrong to the good guy. And the good guy who was doing everything legally and right, who had his FOIA card, his concealed carry, and he defended himself. I, and the part that stood out to me the most when I saw the story was when they, they interviewed somebody and the guy was like, man, I heard over 15 shots go off. Well, in Illinois, we have a magazine capacity limit. Only allows you to have 15 in a handgun, 10 in a rifle. So if you're walking around with a 17-round concealed carry gun, you are illegal. You can, you can be a felon. That's, that's a problem, according to the state of Illinois. I feel like they need to think about that. I wonder if when they, when they make these rules, right, or when they decide to create these weird-ass laws that take away our rights, think about this. Imagine if the laws applied across the board. And then think about the reasons why they say those laws don't apply to the police officer. You know what they say? You know what they say when you ask the question of, why don't the laws apply to the police officer? I said, the police officer, he could walk around with extra magazines, and they could be 17, 18, 19 round mags, and they carry whatever they want, and they don't have restrictions on what they can buy or well, none of that. You know why? They say because the bad guys may have larger magazines. The bad guys have bigger guns. The bad guys have more capacity. So our law enforcement needs to be able to keep up with the bad guys. Think about that.